Okay, thank you very much. We wanted to watch Kaylee finish up her news conference, which I think she did. I assume she did a great job. She's always doing a good job. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We're with our great Hispanic leaders from all over the country. And uh, we've done really well with Hispanics. We like them. They like me. And we've helped them a lot with jobs, whether it's jobs, education, or so many other things. It's been really good. And I think what I might do is I might ask our lieutenant governor from Florida to start just for a short period and just uh, say what we're looking for and how we've done and how we can improve would be great. So, Jeanette, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. It's truly an honor to be here with you and this illustrious group. And what I want to say is that from the perspective as the first female Hispanic lieutenant governor in the history of the state of Florida, I'm honored to be here. All of the things that you've stood for and championed, faith, freedom, future, that, those are things that are critically important to Florida, the economy. We don't need to re reiterate all the numbers and lowest unemployment, home ownership on the rise, and nothing reverberates the American dream louder than owning your own home. Right. And choice and education as a mother, my youngest attends True North Classical Academy, an excellent charter school in Miami. I can tell you that those policies make a difference. They make a difference to a young man, Orlando Rivera, that had to uh, put his dream on hold, and yet he was able to avail himself of a scholarship and make that dream a reality. And those are stories, Mr. President, of people not only that support you, that are going to continue to support you, and I stand ready to support you as well. Thank you, Jeanette. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Mr. President, Dr. Seguire, Founder of Redes America and Jamaica Enterprise, uh, not only are we thankful for your leadership with the Hispanic community that you impacted in such an amazing way the last few years, but uh, the Hispanic faith leadership also surrounds you and not only believes in you, but will deliver for you your, your re-election because we understand that you are the beacon of hope for the Hispanic community. We will rebuild America with you, and we will make America great again. As you did for our community, we will be there at your side to do the same. That's very nice. Thank you very much. We're very proud of the Hispanic community. Steve, please. Mr. President, I'm Steve Cortez, and I am your uh, cable news TV warrior. And uh, my father immigrated to this country legally from Colombia. And uh, I hope that he's looking down from heaven and very proud that I'm sitting at the table with the President of the United States. Uh, regarding Hispanics, I think school choice is a critical issue. You've spoken a lot about it lately, but it's the civil rights issue of our time. I think that's particularly true for the Hispanic community. Too many Hispanic children today are trapped in substandard or failing government schools. We need to empower their families, empower those parents with educational choice uh, so they can go to the schools uh, that will serve them well, many of them Catholic and evangelical schools. I think this is a, a winning issue for the country, a winning issue for you politically as well with the Hispanic community. Thank you very much, Dave. Great job you're doing, Dan. <laughs> Dan, yes. Well, Mr. President, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to dialogue with you on the priority issues for Latinos. Daniel Garza, president of the Libre Initiative. Right. Uh, son of migrant farm workers who came from a small township called Garza Gonzalez, Nuevo León, Mexico. Uh, my parents came to America because they saw it as a promise. And it was here where they achieved the American dream. Uh, we were very motivated uh, when you set the tone early in your uh, administration, when you lessened the tax burden on Latino individuals and businesses. It's so important for Latinos to prosper in America, to have a prosperous America. And it's important to have a prosperous America, to have a prosperous mm -hmm. Latino community. We're interdependent. And uh, we want to see a continued uh, activity of deregulation that we've seen, especially in the area of healthcare through telemedicine, uh, where a doctor doesn't have to be in the same room with the patient. We've seen that during the COVID area, and we want to continue that you know, down the road. Uh, also, Mr. President, uh, I want to remind you of a phone call that we had not that long ago, about a month ago, uh, on the state bailouts, uh, those debts that preceded the COVID era uh, should not be considered. Uh, it, we have to consider our uh, financial health, the uh, fiscal health in America, and make sure that we lessen the debt that we have that are passed on to the next generation. So I want to thank you for your commitment mm -hmm. to that. And, and again, for, I think, setting a table uh, where you, you, we uh, were able to unleash an economic bonanza for the Latino community. Right. Uh, again, you know, uh, low unemployment, high labor participation rates, high wage increases, home ownership, uh, again, we benefited from that. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. We're setting records on jobs. You see that? And right. for the Hispanic community, 2.1 million people back to work already. Exactly. So we're very <clears> proud of that. Thank <throat> you very much, Dan. John, please. Thank you, Mr. President, for allowing us to be here today. What an honor to be here, not only as an American, but a Hispanic American. You know, I can trace my family roots to this country 
decades before the Pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, and, uh, and yet uh, hardworking Americans are growing up in poverty, youngest of eight kids, no dad. Uh, it was through those conservative American ideals, those that you have are fighting for every single day. I was raised by this great woman who had the responsibility of raising eight kids by herself. Great. No running water. But uh, through hard work, staying in school, getting a good education, and taking advantage of the American dream, I'm here sitting across the table from the President of the United States. What an honor. That's the American dream. Thank you, sir. I want to say, uh, coming from New Mexico, now the third largest energy producing state in the country, some of the most richest uh, producing oil fields in the world, rival, and some say maybe more than Saudi Arabia, it is because of your policy, sir, that have unleashed American energy that makes this country now energy independent. And in New Mexico, that translates into jobs. And you know, the majority of those jobs, Mr. President, are Hispanic workers. They may not have a college education or a degree, but you know what? They're working in the oil field making $100,000 a year for their families. They're able to buy a home, send their kids to school, buy a truck. That's the American dream. And so I want to let you know for the great state of New Mexico, the people, the Hispanics, the largest percentage of Hispanics of any state in the nation, we want to say thank you. And we hope that you continue with your second administration, sir, so that you continue to bring the American dream to all Americans, especially Hispanics. That's great, John. And you know the wall is going up, and it's a big factor in New Mexico. We're uh, giving you tremendous safety, security, like never before. But the wall is going up, yes, and it's sir. going up. A big chunk of it is going up in New Mexico, so you yes. know that, and I know they're very happy about and that. And they appreciate national security and public right. safety. That big, beautiful wall, but it has big gates for people who want to enter our nation Absolutely. properly, legally. We're able to do it. Thank That's you, right. Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. President, thank you. For, thank you. Mario Rodriguez, Hispanic 100. First of all, as a son of a uh, Korean Vietnam veteran, I want to thank you for what you've done for the veterans mm -hmm. in this country. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You. I remember my dad and mom complaining that it took them so long to get an appointment with the VA, and now you have taken care of that for them. For that, we thank you. Thank you. And also, thank you for the opportunities of what you're doing on that. I mean, build, I'm building single family homes in Santa Ana, which is the opportunity zone, and it's flourishing. And we're taking these areas that are downward in areas, and they're gonna, in the next five years, you're going to see them flourish. It's going to be incredible what you're doing with the opportunity zones in this country. And one thing I would really, I can't thank you enough for what you tried to do for these DACA recipients. You put something on the table that was very fair. I, I have, we run a mentorship program. And I spoke to one of my uh, mentor mentees, and she's a DOC recipient. And I put on the table what you had on the what you, your initiative that you put forward. And I said, you tell me, and I don't forget about the politics, but you tell me if you think this is a fair start. And she said, absolutely. And what was really disappointing is that the Democrats are using these young adults as political pawns, and that's just totally unacceptable. Well, we had a deal on DOC, and the Democrats broke it. But absolutely. we had a deal, it was a done deal, and then they broke it. and. Uh, now, as you know, we start the process all over again, but we're going to take care of DACA. They're not going to have anything to worry about. But we did have a deal on DACA, and the Democrats decided not to make the deal. So it, was it was a very, very fair deal. It was, it was a great deal. It really was. Really, really was very We'll service. take care of it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you much. very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Mr. President, good afternoon. Alfredo Ortiz, President and CEO of Job Creators Network, an organization that was started by Bernie Marcus, one of our greatest entrepreneur stories. Started in the great Cuba. guy. Um, an amazing, amazing uh, patriot. Entrepreneur. Um, we're proud to have created an organization in the past 10 years that literally went from zero to over 500,000 small business owners in this country. Um, as you correctly identified, pretty much from the first day of your presidency, small business is not only the backbone of our country, but the backbone of our communities. Um, just before COVID, they were really experiencing some of the best growth they had ever seen. Hispanics, uh, in particular, were seeing some of the best growth they had also seen from a, from a small business perspective. Uh, in general, with the highest, you know, some of the highest home ownership on record, as you know, uh, lowest unemployment in history, um, it really had had been an amazing run. I know we had this little blip in COVID, but um, as you just correctly identified, over two million jobs in the last two months were created that were actually Hispanic, um, and so we're very excited. Um, I'm very excited to be here to be here. Also, from a personal perspective, I am the son of uh, I am a proud American. Of, uh, of Mexican descent, I'm the son of uh, two uh, immigrants. My dad was a tailor, my mom was a housekeeper. So to go from uh, literally picking trash and cleaning toilets to sitting here having this conversation with you, only in this country did this happen. So That's correct. Here. Well, we had a great gentleman here yesterday, you know that, right? President of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And he, we had a tremendous uh, 
dialogue going. We're working very well with Mexico, as you know. A lot of people didn't think that was going to happen, and it happened beyond anybody's expectations. So it was really good. It's a great day. Brooke, would you like to say something? Well, thank you. It just strikes me. Steve talked about school choice. Daniel talked about deregulation. John talked about the energy independence. Uh, Mario talked about opportunity zones. You just finished talking about jobs. This is this is what you're fighting for. This is your vision, and to have seen it executed and implemented and the results over the last three and a half years is really remarkable. So thank you all for being here and for being such warriors for the cause of liberty. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mr. President. My name is Eduardo Verastegui. I am an actor and a filmmaker. I am from Mexico, but I work in both Mexico and United States. Uh, so I produce films, and our mission is to make films that uh, hopefully uh, not only will entertain, but hopefully will make a difference in people's lives because we know how media influence, influence how people think. Uh, thank you for your leadership in defending the old world. Um, as you know, Mexicans, the majority of Mexicans, support the right to life. And thank you for defending life in America and in Latin America. Uh, without a doubt, you are the best, the greatest pro-life president in the history of the United States. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for your leadership in the uh, USMCA. Mm. Um, I'm from Mexico, so I'm very, very proud to have you last night. And, um, and I'm very, it's a win-win for Mexico and the United States. But I'm convinced that very soon, very soon, Mexico will be the number one partner trading of the United States. God bless you, and let's make Mexico, America, America, and Mexico great together. <laughs> That's happening. Great God bless you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robert? Mr. President, what can I tell you? I'm so blessed to be here in the most prosperous country in the world the greatest country in the world, and we're so blessed to have you as our leader as we continue to build uh, this country and make it, continue to make it the most prosperous nation in the world. I'm Bobby Nanway, third generation. I'm CEO and president of Boya Foods Inc., a multi-billion dollar company with facilities all over the United States, the Caribbean, and Spain. Uh, we have about 4,500 employees. We call La Gran Familia Goya, the Russian Great Goya family. And these people, we, we didn't, we haven't been back to work because we never stopped. We never stopped working. We doubled our efforts. And I asked the guys and gals, and I said, hey, this is tough. And they said, look, if we don't do it, nobody will. And they said, presente, they said, count on us. Uh, my grandfather left Spain at 18 years old from uh, on a steamship in 1904 uh, with a lot of other European people who the economy over there was not the most prosperous in, in the world. So they came to the United, he came to the United States through Puerto Rico. In 1936, uh, he established, he was importing products from Spain. That was the Spanish Civil War that tried up. He established Goy Foods on Duane Street in Manhattan. At that time, it was a butter and egg market. Uh, now you have Boulay and all these great uh, restaurants and, and all the, the marvelous things in New York. But anyway, we're all over the United States. And the United States, after Mexico, is the largest Hispanic country in the world. By 2050, we will be one third of the population. Prosperity is what we need to faith in God, prosperity, to work hard and to build. You are an incredible builder. And that, I tell our, our people, our family, look, we're just beginning. Because as the country grows, as the Hispanic community grows, we continue to grow. And that is a, uh, the American dream. That's, that's our success in our future. Thank you. Great job. Really great job. Yes. So we'll be speaking outside in a little while in the Rose Garden, and I look forward to seeing you out there, media. And thank you all very much. All right, and you right, folks right, are right, 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 right,
the likes of which nobody's ever seen before. It's a pure witch hunt. It's a hoax, just like the Mueller investigation was a hoax that I won. And this is another hoax. This is purely political. I win at the federal level, and we won very decisively, and so they send it into New York. And you know what's going on in New York. Everyone's leaving. It's uh, turned out to be a hellhole, and they better do something about it because people are leaving New York. But this is a political witch hunt. It just continues. It's been from before I got here when Obama and Biden and everybody else was spying on my campaign illegally. They were illegally spying on my campaign. And that's a very grave crime. It's the biggest political crime in the history of our country. And I want to thank the Hispanic Americans for being with me. You're great people. Thank you very much. All right.